became real evident this summer when we had James Hype walking off of stage two times this year on the flagship setup. <laughs> Hey, what's up? This is Late Back Luke, DJ and bro Oh, it doesn't work like this anymore. Kung Fu athlete and dedicated dad. Make sure you stick all the way until the end of the episode because apart from the cons, I will tell you the pros as well. 2016, only a few skeptics online have pointed this out to me. 2016 is when this was released. Now I'm here announcing the future of real DJing and how is this with a unit that's from 2016? Please note in this vlog, I will highlight the brands Reloop and Algorithm and just know that I'm being endorsed by them. Although I am a fan of their stuff, we are working together to a bright future. So the honest truth right here is that it's outdated. And with that, I wanna highlight some negative aspects about it. There are only four buttons on the unit per track. And this means if I press on the C, go into hot cue mode, it's only four hot cues while on the app, I can program eight hot cues. And it's shared space because we're going from transport to hot cues and on the transport we have loop, sync, cue and play. But when I switch to hot cue mode, I can't actually cue and play and loop in here. So for instance, if I play my track. Electronic dance music is created with. And I wanna use that vinyl stop I need to switch from hot cues to the play button. Jeez. And in the mix, I can't actually do that. I actually want to be doing this. And so right now on this old unit, I don't have the ability to do that. Version five is out of DJ Pro AI and it's amazing. I would love to make a video about all those features, but I'm proud to finally unveil to you that it's due to my efforts that we were able to change the hot cue colors and make it any way we wanted. This didn't happen on the mix door. And honestly, I've been at a couple of shows where I pressed the wrong hot cue thinking, oh, it's the third one, it's the yellow one, the yellow one, oh no, the yellow one is the second one, so I need to hit it here, and then I hit the wrong one. <laughs> so during my sets, I'm constantly calculating, oh, it's the fourth hot cue, the fourth one is the green one, so I need to, one, two, three, four, and there it is. And this gets super tricky. I still love playing my sets as live as I can, constantly switching hot cues, and whenever you hit the wrong one, it's, um, it's painful. And we haven't spoken about the actual output of this thing. The actual output signal of this unit in actual terms is 16 bit, 44.1 kilohertz. This goes into a channel in the DJ mixer and from the DJ mixer, it will go to the club or festival system. There's plenty of DJs on CDJs on the flagship system that are playing MP3s, possibly streaming music. And so this being 16-bit isn't that much of a problem to me, but it's not very pro, so to say. The filter and the effects button basically is under one knob. So this is the filter solo, right? And when I click the effects button, the effects is on, but to alter the tempo changes in the effects, it's with this knob as well. So now it's super short, right? Super short. And now it's longer. But it also works together with the filter if I have it on. Now there's a workaround. I can hold the shift button and then adjust the filter knob without it actually filtering. So that's only the tempo changes. Let's check it out. Effects on, holding the filter button. So now it's only the time, right? So that's a little workaround, but definitely not optimal. What also isn't optimal is that this is basically only two decks. I have access to only two decks from here. And what I love about the DJ Pro AI app is that there's a four deck section. But the only way for me to access this is to actually touch the phone screen, which I actually don't want to do that much. I love just going in here and not touching the screen. But when I involve track number one or track number four, I am actually on my phone, pressing my phone. You see how small this is and it gets super tricky and especially with mixing in. So let's load up a track on deck number four and let's just do a quick mix. Say I go from the intro of the track you had just heard 
And it's funny, I'm, I'm opening this slider as if I'm going to do something with the slider. It gets that confusing, but I can't access that. So this is useless. Okay, let's just uh, start from the outro. And because it's four hot cues, I can't actually access my fifth hot cue, the outro. But let's go to the outro. And I'll mix this in on screen. I'll give it a little bit bass here. Bass less here. Back to cue points and I'll just stop this. And maybe I need a bit of extra volume. And we're there. Say I want to mix out from there. Let's do it the other way around. So now I need to take the bass out of here, right? Bass in here. Let's go there. Ah, and honestly, in my 25 plus years of DJing, doing this in a club or festival is nerve wracking. Even, even for you guys, I, uh, I have sweaty armpits right now. Huge con for me, like, what's going on, right? And then, and then, let's talk about this bad boy. Because this is the power adapter. A portable unit like this doesn't have its own power, and so now there's a power adapter. And my only gripe with this mobile system is that I often need to talk to the sound person and sort of strike a deal. Hey, before I go on, can you plug this in for me? because then I'll get my wires ready and I'll do everything else. But it has happened to me one time before I was at a festival and I plugged this in. I was starting my set. I was about three tracks in and all of a sudden it was a blackout. No music. The faders were right. I checked my crossfader and everything because I love using my crossfader and no music. And I look onto the DJ table and I see this guy laying out to the side of the socket. And I'm like, oh no, it jumped. And so nowadays, whenever I give this to the sound person, I'll tell them to tape it into the socket. If there's no tape and I start, I'm like, yo, 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 I need tape. Just make sure this is taped correctly because mind you, this doesn't look like a professional wire, right? If this jumps, then we have nothing. So far from ideal as well. If you have some comments by now, make sure to leave them down below and make sure you stick to the bonus. I actually have a really cool bonus at the end of the vlog where I say something positive about the flagship system. How about that? I have one more con before I actually call out a couple of pros. The way this mixer comes out of the box, there's actually, not that I know, maybe Reloop knows, a way to access Neural Mix. And for me, I have programmed it myself. So in the DJ Pro AI app, you can dive into the settings scroll through the MIDI devices, there's your mix door, and whenever you turn a knob, it'll get to that knob and it'll show you, okay, so deck one, when I turn this knob, it's a low EQ, but this is what I programmed. If I do shift and turn on the low EQ, it is Neural Mix Volume 1, and this means all the beats go out. And I have the same for the mids, and where I can find my acapellas at is when I do press shift and it's the high, EQ, but I had to program this myself, diving into the actual settings, looking that up and just toggling that. This is a very nice segue into the pros of this tiny little system here, because being able to program all of your knobs, you can actually custom fit this little workspace into how you want it. The way it loops, the way it syncs, the tempo modification that I have here under the hot cues now. And I just love this browse button where I can just go into any folder that I want, dive into it, say I want to load this track, I'll load it to deck number two, I'll press load and it's there. And I know I was complaining about the filter and the effects being in one knob, but I've also really been enjoying that. This is something I didn't have on any flagship system and it's just a, a, a one button, it's a one hand movement and you get two effects at the same time. So actually I'm enjoying that as well. And then another pro is because it's such a small setup and the hot cues are aligned next to each other, you'd be able to do tricks that you can't do on a flagship system. For instance, can you do this on a flagship system? I didn't know if you saw that, but I am manipulating two tracks with one hand. 
just because the cue points are so close to each other. And so now all of a sudden I'm developing these new tricks because my setup is different now. And then the absolute biggest pro for me became real evident this summer when we had James Hype walking off of stage two times this year. DJ Rewire was complaining about it too on the flagship setup because there's so many DJs on there. A lot of the buttons often don't work. Effects are gonna be out. You'll have DJs that handle all this equipment real roughly. And I am bringing my own. And because I'm bringing my own, I know that it works. Although I do some fader training on these units, I know I have not been using it as a hammer. I know all the buttons work and everything. So when I go on stage, I know what to expect and I'm not reliant on, without hate, the rental company bringing the right gear or maybe two or three DJs playing before me that have absolutely wrecked the setup and now you're stuck with an effects button that doesn't work. Okay, before I get to the bonus, I wanna to talk to you about this thing. This is my dedicated Reloop travel case and unfortunately, they are sold out. It's been a huge favorite of mine because I, I just pack my unit in here and I'll go to the show like this, it's like a wallet. Can easily put this in my travel luggage without hurting any of the faders. I did do a few modifications because there's a con to this as well. It actually doesn't hold any wires. So I'm usually just kind of folding all my wires in here and even putting my little power adapter on top, which is absolutely tricky. It's still working for me, but when I take it out and I zip it up and I put it next to a club mixer, this is the same exact height as the club mixer. And having said that, we are in the lab. I am editing the video. And all of a sudden I realized I didn't actually give you an answer as to why I would pick the mix store as my mobile weapon of choice. See, the thing is there's plenty mobile controllers around, but the form factor, the actual form factor of the mix store mixer is absolutely unique. Very straightforward with the faders, with the EQs. You can't find that anywhere. So apart from the cons, this is really the only thing that's out there that's really working for me. All right, the bonus is gonna be really good. Let's get back into it. I was gonna tell you something positive about the flagship setup, right? No hate, this is really just the reality of it. Obviously, this is not a Pioneer mixer. This is the Reloop RMX 95 mixer. But let's pretend this is the Pioneer mixer. The beauty of a flagship Pioneer mixer is, or any DJ mixer in that sense, it makes for a great phone stand. Oh boy, leaving you with another mic drop in this vlog. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate your time and your eyeballs on this journey of mine. The last thing I wanna say about this journey in 2023 that I'll have more news for you in the new year. Catch you back here for the next episode. Until then, L's up, rave safely, and salute.